So President Mahama appears to be indicating that he wants to be president again. He wants to contest the NDC ticket in um, this year, end of this year, to become the NDC's presidential candidate for the election of 2020. And hopefully if he wins, he'll become president again for the second time. There's a lot of discussion within the NDC itself, outside the NDC, as to whether he is the best candidate or that he is not the best candidate. There are other candidates contesting for the same position um, on this one. On our editorial tonight, we're asking whether he should run for president again. The first thing I think we need to sort out is that some people actually uh, don't understand whether he can run for president again. That's the legal position, whether uh, he, the, after he's been president, like Rawlings has been president, Kufo has been president, John Mahama has been president. So they're asking the question, can he be president again? Yes, he can. And uh, the answer to the question is in Article 66 of the 1992 Constitution, 66 Clause 2, which we'll show to you now, uh, it's, it's the answer to the question. You can see it says that a person can run for two terms as president. It doesn't say two consecutive terms or two terms apart. So John Mahama has been president for one term and the constitution um, describes the period of one term as four years from the day that the person was sworn in as president. So John Mahama has done one term and he is able to do at most one more term and that's part of the conversation we'll be having. He can do one more term. So he can be president in 2020 until 2024, or he can be president from 2024 until 2028. So yes, John Mahama is qualified to run for president. Let's move on and look at John Mahama's personality, which some people believe is, is, is uh, perhaps one of the fine things about him as a politician. In John Mahama's personality, we, let's hear what Kojo Bonsu, uh, one of the NDC stalwarts, former mayor of Kumase, has to say about John Mahama's personality. After our rebranding, that was when he was selected as our running mate. He brought a lot of people on board. I mean, people who really didn't want to know NDC came to join because of John Mahama. So that's Kojo Bosu's view of President Mahama. And uh, well, he's an internal NDC person. But many people think of, of President Mahama as, yes, he has a nice personality, he's a nice person. But there's something else we found about President Mahama in terms of how he views other people and we found it from his book now president mahama is the only Ghanaian president to have published a book it's entitled my first coup d'etat and uh, in a chapter of the book entitled of silence and solidarity he singles out a, a young man in his school in class three in achimoto school and writes about him the young man's name is ezra from our research we are getting into the mind of john mahama and we're asking ourselves was he thinking of ezra and his posturing and comparing it to perhaps the posturing of somebody within the NDC. We'll get to that in some detail. But let's look at what John Mahama writes about um, Ezra, his young friend in, in primary school. He says, and, and in the book, it was with much consternation that we came to realize that the brand new member of our class three group was a bona fide bully. That's what President Mahama says. He's indicating that he doesn't like bullies. So he says that the guy was a bully. It took a while, he says, at least the first few weeks of the term, for that truth to come to light because initially he tried to blend it in. I think it was his way of studying us, taking note of our individual constitution and our collective consciousness so that when he was ready, he will know how far he could go. Because, President Mahama says in the book, people will push you only as far and hard as you allow them to. Feigning kindness and friendship was his due diligence. It goes on to say the boy's name was Ezra. And despite his best efforts to fit in, it was apparent from the start that it would be difficult for him to fit in. There were 10 of us in the dormitory, he says, and Ezra was the tallest. He was a couple of years older than us as, he, as I, 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 I jump some, over some of the lines and go to the last uh, line in this second paragraph. It says it will be impolite and in poor taste, uh, as he said, to ask uh, why Ezra was in their class because he was older than them. And it will be of no difference. Anyway, after all, he says, whatever the reasons, Ezra was in our class. Something else that made Ezra stand out, he says, was that he was very muscular, which was quite strange for a child. His, physical, his physique resembled those of the men we sometimes saw on the campus ground clearing the underbush with long, slightly curved cutlasses. Their skin, he says, which was blacker than even a starless sky at midnight, uh, would be glistering with sweat describing the men that Ezra looked like this is the people who were using the langa langa as we call it to cut the bush um, he goes on and says that the rest of the class were of average size 
we weren't weaklings that's what president mahama says he says we weren't weaklings nor did we look as though we had kwashoko though standing next to ezra you might be inclined to wonder i wasn't at all surprised to learn that ezra's father was a farmer though i would have guessed it that though i would have guessed that it was an animal farm and not a cocoa farm because ezra looked as though he had been born raised and fed in much the same way as livestock that's in the book so in in this series president mahama reveals his disdain for bullies his disdain for people who try to get other people to act along the way they wanted he goes on to say his father though uneducated had made a lot of money for himself he wanted his son to attend achimota the school where the doctors lawyers politicians and other members of the upper echelon send their kids with good reason the book continues ezra was a bush boy he said with good reason because perhaps ezra was a bush boy he was tactless and uncouth little by little as the days and weeks wore on he revealed more of his true nature so this is ezra who is singled out for description in not so complimentary terms by president mahama in his book essentially that ezra was a bully now this president mahama at age nine or eight in class three writing his book as vice president then soon to become president and was recounting the dislike he had for this guy who was a bully type guy okay uh finally he goes on he says that um we went out of our way to be nice to him we would invite him to play with us we would let him stand at the front of the queue in the dining hall we did all of this to welcome him into our circle it was a show of hospitality ezra saw it as a deficiency his invitation to crown himself as king of us all so that's the that's a thesis on ezra that president mahama puts in his book we are trying to reveal the personality of president mahama you heard what kojo bonswa said and then and that is um that's what he says about ezra let's move on to look at the profile of president mahama in terms of his political experience and we know that already president mahama became a politician in um, the 1996 elections in that election he won the seat in bali bamboy to represent the ndc which was the ruling party at the time in 1997 he was made deputy minister of communication at that time the uh, ndc had merged the ministries of information and communication so he was deputy minister of communication then he became minister of communication in a reshuffle that occurred sometime in 1998 in 2000 he won his seat even though the ndc lost the presidential elections he went into parliament and in parliament he became the ranking member of the foreign affairs committee later on he became vice president and also he became president so that's president Mohammed's political profile quite rich and uh, quite uh, sustaining in terms of his understanding and appreciation of politics so let's look at the merits of a john mahama um, presidential aspiration on the ndc ticket now the point about the ndc's campaign in 2020 is that it will it, it, it will have a monolithic theme what the ndc will be telling the Ghanaian people it's a comparative analysis they'll be inviting Ghanaians to do a comparative analysis between what akufado has done from 2016 to 2020 and what john mahama had done in his first term perhaps they can go over to mills mpp will go over to kufo but those will be the fringe sort of narrative the main central theme of 2020's campaign is john mahama's four years versus akufado's four years so if the ndc candidate is say spiel gabra he would have to be talking about john mahama's record of the first four years most likely they will they will hinge on infrastructure etc etc but spiel gabra will have to be mentioning john mohammed's name consistently in his campaign against the mpp if it's joshua alabi he'll have to do the same thing he will be confined to mention john mohammed's name against the mpp so the big merit for john mohammed is that why not he himself because he's available so and he's qualified to run so instead of spiel gabra running on john mohammed's record why can't John Mahama come and put up his own record and say, this is what I did? That would be a stronger message in, in communication terms than for somebody to say it for him. So that's what's going for John Mahama in terms of whether or not he should run. It's a big meritorious uh, argument for him that the, the campaign is going to run on a comparative analysis basis, on a comparative, you know, you, you did this, I did this. And it's going to be John Mahama's time, Akufado's time. If John Mahama is available, he must be certainly the one talking about it. So that's a big merit for John Mahama. And they might say that he's been president before so he sort of understands the mistakes he made and he'll be able to do it better this, this time he has more experience etc etc that's the merit going for him but what are the demerits 
of John Mahama's campaign? What are the things that will go against him if he should decide to run? Let's look at the demerits now. So in terms of the demerits uh, that go against John Mahama, the cons that go against John Mahama, um, people are going to say that he has been deputy minister. He's been minister. He's been vice president. He's been president. What else does John Mahama want to do? The MPP are going to rack up that campaign against him, and they are going to say all of those issues against him. It looks like gradually he's getting the NDC together, but he's going to have to deal with that question. People who work for John Mahama and his communication, his campaign team, will have to deal with that question. What else does John Mahama want to achieve? Deputy minister, minister, vice president, president. Is there anything more he can do for the people of Ghana? That's, that, that, that's a question that you have to answer. The other bit is President Mahama's relationship with the Godfathers, particularly Flight Lieutenant Rawlings. And we bring back the Ezra question. We're asking tonight that is Rawlings the new Ezra in President Mahama's life? He had one Ezra when he was three years old in Atsumoto school, when he was eight years old in class three in Atsumoto school. Does he feel that he has another Ezra, a bully type guy who comes to join the class, comes to join the club and wants to take over and wants to take over brutally without negotiation and wants to direct people as to what they should do? Is that how President Mahama sees President Rawlings as the new Ezra in his life? We're asking that question tonight on, in this editorial. Because his relationship with Fly Left and Rawlings has not been very good. Well, it was okay in 2012, but it was not okay in 2016. And we were wondering, everyone was wondering why Rawlings was not on the campaign. And Johnson Asidu Nketia offered an explanation. He said JJ is too old, and so JJ cannot be part of the campaign. Now, when the NDC's uh, launch of campaign occurred in Cape Coast, however, JJ was present. And it was then that people got to understand uh, that JJ is really not part of this campaign. This is what Mr. Rawlings said, just to remind you, in Cape Coast at the launch of the NDC campaign of 2016. I will reserve what I have to say till after the elections, when I will come around the country to share with you how I think we could restore the kind of strength that can take us well into the future. I will reserve what I have to say till after the elections, when I will come around the country to share with you how I think we could restore the kind of strength that can take us well into the future. Okay, so JJ then did not participate in the rest of the campaign, and it was expected that he would be at the final rally at the Accra Sports Stadium, where John Mahama addressed the, the NDC faithfuls, a, a really, really mammoth crowd at that rally. Easily over 200,000 people were in the stadium, out of the stadium, in the environs of the stadium that day. It was a really big crowd. It was expected that Fly Left and Rawlings would be there. He didn't show up. At the final rally so everyone was wondering what is mr rollins doing is it true that perhaps he's tired and perhaps he's not well or something like that everyone that question about what rollins was doing was answered on the day that salot said declared the election results and we all found out that apparently flight lieutenant rollins had been working for the npp during the period of the campaign here is the evidence To the senior citizens of our country who have given me invaluable advice over the years, amongst them the former President of the Republic, His Excellency Jerry John Rawlins, the former Secretary General of the United Nations, His Excellency Kofi Annan, and Captain Kojo Chikata. So to those names that uh, Nana Kufado mentioned in thanking them, Captain Chikata and, uh, and, and Fly Lieutenant Rollins, do remember to add the name of this man. The man you see on the screen is General Arnold Kwenu, a, a military general of high rank who is one of those affiliated to the NDC and very loyal to the NDC and also one of the overlords of the Volta region. It is widely reported that he with JJ and others were in the Volta region campaigning against John Mahama. So that the difference between Flight Lieutenant Rawlings and Ezra is that whereas Ezra came to join the Achimata school class, Mr. Rawlings actually set up this thing called the NDC. So that's the difference. 
Ezra came to join. Mr. Rawlings set it up. And if John Mahama is not able to fix the relationship with Rawlings, would it once again affect him if he runs a national election? I don't know. Your guess is as good as mine. We can look at it. But it certainly did affect the outcome of 2016. Could it affect the outcome of 2020 as well? I don't know. Now, Mr. Rawlings set up the party in 1992. That's a very long time ago, 25, 26 years ago. And then Mr. Rawlings held the soul and the image of the party. Does he still hold the soul of the image of the party now? I don't know. Let's go back all the way to 1992 and see the way in which the NDC outdoored Fly Lefton and Rawlings as their flag bearer. And you will hear later on what Dr. Obed Asamoah and what Guzi Tando said about J.J. Rawlings. Now, if you look at this video and you don't see yourself in it, and you don't see your godfather in it, you don't see your father in it, your uncle in it, then you are a new member of the NDC. This is the NDC of old, NDC 1992. J.J.'s NDC. That's how it started. Today, the elections were conducted by your officials under our supervision. The elections have been conducted in accordance with your constitution in our presence, and we have been given a copy of the a list of elected uh, persons in various capacities. We are satisfied that the elections were conducted under the terms of your constitution. Thank you very much. There is no knowledge. There's no need any introduction to part of this Congress or the general electorate of Ghana. Since 1979, and for a period of 13 years, he has led a courageous, constructive, and successful revolution to rescue our dear country from decay and hopelessness. John. <laughs> JJ was popular and we knew that if we set up a party in his name and made him the presidential candidate, he would win the elections, which he did. So after you've seen all of that, we can continue the discussion, we can continue analyzing. But the question we are putting to you is that, and, and send your comments on our Facebook page, the question we are putting to you tonight is that, should John Mahama run for president again? Thanks for watching.